I would like to issue a challenge to you, my library marketing friends. I have three phrases that I want to hear us start saying to each other, to our coworkers more frequently in the coming months. I'm going to explain why this is so important in this episode of the Library Marketing Show. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Angela Hirsch. I'm the person behind the blog, superlibrarymarketing.com. You can head there and look for the Library Marketing Show tab to suggest a topic or ask a question to be answered in a future episode of the show or to nominate your library or another doing great work in marketing for our kudos award, which we're going to give away a little later in this episode. Before we get into our topic, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button. If you're watching this on LinkedIn and you're not yet a follower, please click the follow button. Both of those actions will result in a notification every time I upload a new episode. Also, if you find these videos helpful, useful, inspiring, scary, thought-provoking, go ahead and react to them using the reaction buttons on YouTube or LinkedIn. The thumbs up is always great. Commenting is always wonderful too. I love hearing from you. So I take a lot of walks and on a recent walk, I was thinking about the three phrases that I wish I heard more often from my fellow library marketers. And so I just decided to turn it into an episode today and a challenge for you to work these into your library marketing vocabulary. The first phrase is, I don't know. We often get asked to do things. Um, We often get asked questions about what might be the most effective promotion for a service or a program. And I don't know about you, but I do not know all the things. And in fact, a lot of the time I'm asked a question and I have to say, I don't know, can I get back to you with more on that? And then I have to go off and do some research. Um, I look at websites that I love to get uh, advice from. I look at what libraries are doing and what other libraries are doing. And I try to formulate an answer to the best of my ability with the information that I have. But that I don't know that I need to give initially is really, really hard. I also think letting people know that we don't know some things right off the bat and we need to do some research does two things. It's an authentic response. It makes you look and feel more human to the person that you're talking to. And number two, it sort of drives home that point that we all know intrinsically as library promoters. And that is that doing this work is an experiment. And a lot of times we need to do a little research before we actually go and launch something because we're not exactly sure if it's going to work or not. We need to be transparent about that with our coworkers and our supervisors and those that we talk to. So I don't know is phrase number one. Phrase number two is, let's try it. I think we are a little too hesitant to try new things in library marketing. We have email newsletters, we have signs and flyers, and we kind of just do the same things over and over again because it's comfortable and we think it's working, which is going to, we're going to get to in phrase number three, but I want us to do more bold experimentation in library marketing. So I want to hear you say, let's try it to all kinds of new things. And then you're going to report the results and learn more about marketing. So the third phrase, like I said, is tied to this. And that is, here are the numbers. This is actually a positive version response to a phrase that I don't like hearing from library marketers. And that is the phrase, it appears that this is working or we think our audience is responding to it. No more it appears or we think. We are going to measure and use numbers and data to tell us and our coworkers and our supervisors whether something is working or not. I don't think supposition is a good way to go about marketing. It often leads us again to do the same things over and over just because it's comfortable to us and we know how to do it rather than taking a leap and doing something different that might really resonate with your audience. So here are the numbers and you're going to measure your promotions and do that reporting to the folks that you work with. Those are my three phrases. What would you like to hear 
more library marketers say in regards to promotions, let's start a conversation down in the comments. You can also share with me some phrases that you hear that just kind of make you cringe or you don't want to hear anybody in library marketing say those things again. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this down in the comments. Okay, it's time to give away kudos today. And our kudos today is going to go to the Calgary Library. I'm going to put a link to an incredible article that was published. It was actually an editorial, a first person column, as they call it, um, in this particular publication. And it was written by somebody who came to Calgary, who immigrated from Nigeria, talking about how scary that move was and intimidating and how they found their people at the library. And I just want to give Calgary kudos. I don't know how they worked to connect to this person with the publication, which um, basically is the Canadian Broadcasting Company. Um, so big national uh, piece that they had done on the Calgary library. It's got a beautiful photo in it and a great patronus hero story about the Calgary Public Library. I just think that's kind of amazing. Please read it. Share it with your network. Awesome job, Calgary Library. Okay. That's it for today's episode, but my channel has lots more tips for library promotions. And if you're interested in that, click on the video and I'll see you there.